customer. This is what my customer wants to see. This is what they want to use. Therefore, I need to put more of this in place so I can get at more of that. So then you mine the database. Um, and then you make these, you make predictive information from the database. So the company that we all know that does this the best in our location is Giant Eagle. Giant Eagle was known for this. Anytime you scan your Advantage card, the Advantage card is used essentially for them to know what your consumer behavior is for buying products, what they should put on sale and when they should put it on sale, um, how much you're willing to spend on things, and what kind of coupons you want related to the products that you buy. Think about fuel perks too. Giant Eagle has their way of getting you to go in their store, so that then you go to another, then you go to their gas station and use your fuel perks and basically give the money back to them as a company. And it's a genius model, and they use it by database mining. Once again, even though I'm talking about this in this class, obviously none of you can do this for a massive project in this class. This is like think tank life type of thing, but it's fascinating how it works, and I think it's why I like this chapter so much. So. You know, I mentioned this with Harris. Um, Harris is not stereotypical high rollers. They're middle-aged, middle-class slot players. That's that's who's spending the money there, and that's what's going there. And for those of you that do know casinos, um, the Meadows is more apt to give somebody that's going there for a fun time this type of player. They're more apt to give them money. Rivers, it's not the case. Rivers is targeting a high roller type of atmosphere while throwing a bone to the middle-class players. The Meadows, Wheeling Downs, those two casinos, Presque Isle, if you're looking even in Erie, they're more geared towards middle class, and they did it through this Harris model. Harris was, the, Harris was the first one that noticed this, caught this, and really built upon this. So we give you some data mining in the NBA. Um, I would love to, I mean, geez, if I, could, if I could do an entire course on Moneyball, I would love to do course on that but you know it's it's not kind of the same thing who are they who is spending money in the NBA and, and who are they marketing to um, you know example you know living and growing up in Pittsburgh I love NBA basketball my dad played basketball was his passion in life so I love basketball and one of the things that we used to be able to do when I was growing up the Cleveland Cavaliers games were regularly on television well nobody cared about the Cleveland Cav Cavaliers when I was growing up then LeBron came in and they found that the people that were going to the games had changed. The context went to wealthy white people that were at the highest spending levels and ticket prices soared and you couldn't get tickets to go see them. When LeBron leaves, ticket prices go down. You can basically get an awesome seat right behind the hoop for 10 or $15. When LeBron comes back, it moves from the urban, the urban back to the elite suburban model too. And this is how it works with most, uh, with most organizations. Strangely enough, the, if we're talking sports, and I like talking about sports, the NBA model that does not represent this is the Los Angeles Lakers. Even if the Lakers are performing per poorly, they're still getting the wealthy population because of their market and their target audience that they're going for. The Lakers try for that market and that audience, and that's important. Maybe we'll talk about sports later. I hope we can. So what should you do with database marketing? All you got to remember here is you customize it over time, and it is a process that changes, and I think that's important. So key ideas and key takeaways from this chapter, and this is it. Um, kind of, you know, all of this is all of this is important, um, but I think you know you want to look at the different types of responses. You want to see the difference between front end and back end, and what creates value. Um, if you can do data mining, you can't for this project in this class, but maybe you can if you're doing something with a Facebook page. Um, try to think of it as a continuous process that you're constantly building on. So that's it for chapter four, and I look forward to working with you on our next chapter. Thank you.